Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, what we're going to do today is we're going to use a bit of absolute positioning to show you how to position your buttons absolutely. So you can basically put them wherever you want to. It's a really handy feature of the Divi theme. So let's get started. First thing I want to do is enable our visual builder so we can build on the front end. Okay, let's go down to where we want to work. Divi is absolutely awesome, keeps getting better and better with more and more features. If you want to take it for a test drive, you can do so from my affiliate link below this video. Okay, let's go ahead and add a new section. A little blue button to add a section, regular section. Inside that, I'm going to put a, a row with two columns. There we have it. In the first one, I'm going to put a blurb module in there. And as you can see by default, it throws in a placeholder image and a bit of text. So let's just make this our own quickly. Obviously, you're going to have some text to put in there. I really don't have a lot to say as this is not a real site. And let's add an image of some sort. There we go, fantastic. And I'm going to give this a background color just below right here. I'm going to make it black. And I'm going to want to make our text white so we can see it or light it at least. Let's go up to our design, the text. Change that from dark to light. There we go. So we've got our basic blog in there. Now then, what I want to do now is I'm just going to save that. I'm going to go into our columns or into our row and into one of the columns and make give it a background color. I guess I'll use this sort of hot pink color that we've been using for the rest of the site here. I'm using Google Chrome. I've just right clicked to inspect. I could go into the modules and get the color, but uh, there it is right there. Fantastic. Right, now let's go into our row green tab right here, blue for the section, green for the tab, and dark gray for the module itself. So we're going into the row, little cog, and let's go into column one, which is where our blurb module is, and we'll give it a background color. And paste in that hex code I just copied. Can't see it, but it's actually got a pink background now because it's behind our blurb module. What we'll do, we'll do kind of what we did here. We'll give it a bit of extra space on the bottom. So let's go to design and padding or spacing, padding. Let's give it 50 pixels on the bottom. There we go. You can see your little pink color popping through there now. Now then what I'm going to do is make our little blurb section. I only want it to cover about half the width of our column there. So let's save our changes that we've done to our column and our row there. Let's go back into the blurb module. We'll go over to the design settings, go to sizing. Now width wise, I only want it to be about 50% of the width of our column right there. So I'm going to say width 50%. There we go, that was what I was looking for. Now I kind of want to give the whole thing a bit of spacing all around so it's not sort of buffered up like it is at the moment. So we'll have a bit of black all around the section there. So let's close up sizing, go to spacing, and let's give it 20 picks all around. So we've got 20, hit the chain. It'll do the opposite side and same on the left and right. There we go, fantastic. Well, that's in place. Now what I want to do is add our buttons, but I don't want them to just to fall underneath as they would normally if you didn't position them. So this is where our absolute positioning is going to come in. So I'm going to hit the little gray plus there, or the gray background with a white plus on it, add a new module, let's add a button. Now you probably won't see anything because I think that pink's our default color and it's probably the button is pink itself and let's say shop now 
or whatever it is you care to say. And like I say, you can't see it, so let's get it so we can see it. I'll just change the the button background here. Use custom styles for the button, design tab, button, custom styles for button, switch that one to on. Uh, button text, let's make that white, you should see it now, there it is. And uh, let's make the background red, whatever color you choose, that's fine. And we'll do the same with the border color, so it's the same as the background color. Great. Now then, let's make the magic happen a little bit because I want this button if we look up at our ones above I want my button somewhere up here like these three and also when I hover over it I really don't want to see that little icon there you may I don't so let's turn the icon off show button icon no now to position it where we want to let's go to our advanced tab go down and you'll find position right here and just under where it says position at the moment it says default I want to make it absolute there we go and it's disappeared up to the top left corner which is where it's opened up this little box and it gives us little locations here where we can put the thing which is really handy so I'm going to put it there, then I'm going to adjust it. If we scroll down just a little bit more, you've got a vertical offset, which will offset it vertically, obviously, and a horizontal offset, which will horizontally offset it. So you can slide your slider, put it where you want. You can have it out of the box if you want to, out of the column. I'm going to put mine ooh, somewhere about there. Actually, let's do this in percent. I'll say 20%. Yeah, that's about right and I want it over a bit so we need to vertically offset it you can use the little arrows here if you just want to adjust it a little bit or you can type in a value if you want to adjust it a lot let's say 10% I think that's what I used above there we go that's gonna pretty much work for me the other thing I did want to add a little bit of box shadow to that button Go. fantastic great so what I need to do now is I'll save that and I'll add another button now you may find that you can't get to your button for some reason and it's because we positioned it like that no problem at all if this happens go down to this little purple button at the bottom here click on it and we'll go over to wireframe view which is this little icon right here left click If we go up, there's our blurb, there's our button. I'm going to duplicate it twice. One, two. Now I'm going to go to work on the second button. I'm just going to hit the little cog. Now it's open. I'm going to put it back to desktop view. Roll up to where we were. And you're probably saying, well, where is it? Where's our second button? Well, it's because we duplicated it. It's on top of the original one right there. So all we want to do with this is we'll change the background color use this crazy orange color and the border color wants to be the same we want to change the positioning of it so we go to our advanced down to position again we're not going to mess with any of this here what we're going to do is just change the vertical offset so let's make this say 30 let's see what that does as you can see it's dropped it down below there it is it's not quite enough for me there yeah, about 35 that works perfectly now I guess we'll change the button text And of course, you put the link to wherever you want your button to go. If you're going to a product, you can use Dynamics to link it to a product or a page or wherever you want to send your customers. So that one's fine. Let's save that one. Now we need to rinse and repeat for the next one. And obviously we've got the same problem because we can't get to it because we repositioned it. Again, let's go to wireframe. There's our third button. Let's click on the cog.
whatever you need to put there and put in your link over to design I'm going to change the background again to the button button text color the leave that is we'll make the background green and the border green this time now we just need to go over to our positioning sorry let's put it back on desktop so you can see what I'm doing actually you won't see it till I move the position because it's under the other ones there it is oh it's actually on top great okay and now let's position it position and our last one was 35 so it's 20 plus 15 so 35 plus 15 would be 50 if I'm not mistaken which I often am there we go that's pretty much it let's save our changes save our page changes once saved let's exit the visual builder go down to where we were there's our first ones here we are right there I like it works for me and it's a great thing to be able to use absolute positioning now let's make sure this is going to work on a tablet and a phone like I say I'm using Google Chrome so if I hit the F12 key and bring up the inspector got a little device toggle here let's switch that one on let's turn this up to 100% so we can see Okay, that's on our iPhone. Let's bring that down a little bit. That's actually okay. Um, you can read everything fine. You could make that a little bit bigger if you wanted to, just on the phone. So let's have a look now on a tablet. iPad. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. So why don't we go in and just change it a little bit on the phone so it displays a little bit better there. I've noticed the reason mine works so well here is I've got 100% on that one. This one I don't, so we've got a gap either side. So we can change that. Let's just get rid of that inspector. And enable our visual builder again. Once it's enabled, let's go down to our thing. What I'm going to do is go into my row here. I'm just going to tweak the settings here. I'm happy with the gutter width. I am going to equalize the column height. So if we do another one, it'll be the same height. And the width, I'm just going to bang that up to 100%. And that should fix that mobile issue that we saw just now. Save our changes. Save the page changes. Exit the visual builder. Let's go down. Now here's our little module. Let's hit the F12 again, get our responsive devices up there's our first one that's not it that's not it either here it is here's the one we just did that's fine that's on an iPad now let's look at that phone one again I think it might be up there we are that's better that fits a bit better I mean I quite like those overlapping that but you can read everything a little bit easier and it's just like the ones above so there you have it that is how to add buttons using absolute positioning of course you can use absolute positioning on absolutely everything if you want to and it's a great thing to use so i hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up share comment and subscribe to our youtube channel once again this has been jamie from system 22 and webdesignandtechtips.com thanks for watching have a great day